Uh, last week I was uh, dealing with new you. If you remember, new you, new you when you, you gave your life to Christ, something happened to you. You confess Christ through grace. You know when you became born again, it was grace that found you, and faith through faith you confess. Grace found you. Then by faith you now confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. And there are some elements that helps you to to actually develop some kind of re, uh, 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 relationship or helps you to find your place in God. Hallelujah. And uh, those elements were relationship. Amen. Relationship. And then trust in God. We have trust issue. And also faith in God. By faith, you know, you, you increase your faith by the word of God. And then you begin to know yourself, know your role, what he has called you to do, what are the things that you're supposed to do as a Christian. And then uh, last week I kind of uh, talked about uh, new you, which means that uh, you are some kind, of, I mean, somehow, some way before. But now that you have given your life to Christ, you are now a new person in Christ. Uh, amen. Can somebody tell me what is in 2 Corinthians 5 17? Sorry, I can't hear. If anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation. All things pass away and all become new. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, next week, if I ask you, what is in Second Corinthians five seventeen? Should be able to know. Somebody's trying to write down now. Hallelujah, Amen. So new you, you become born again by accepting Christ into your life, confessing true faith. Grace found you. Praise the Lord. And now you are. Now you need to become new you. And we are trying to make make us understand that uh, it's not an easy thing to just become new you. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And you have to come to a point of, uh, of transformation. You have to be transformed from what you used to be to the new you. Hallelujah. And the new you uh, 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 required us to culture you. You need to be cultured. You need to come into a new, you know, a, a new way of life. This is the way you used to do things and now we are asking you, not by force, obviously we are not forcing you to change, but we are asking you that if you want to enjoy your new environment, the new kingdom of Christ that you have been brought in, then you need to change some things about you that we make you you know, uh, 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 have access into things that are already prepared for you in uh, 1 Corinthians 2.9. The Bible says, I have not seen, nor hear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man things that God has prepared for those who love him. But he says, he has done what? Prepare, you know, reveal them to us to us us are the new people amen we the new people have inside information of how to go about Gillingham, medway wherever because we live where in medway we live in kent hallelujah we know our ways around kent because this is where we live so when you are in your in the new kingdom of a son of Christ, you need to get yourself familiarized with everything. You need to find, you know, you need to find your way. It might not happen overnight. No, it cannot happen overnight. But you work at it. You try to learn. And this is where we come in as pastors, as teachers, to teach you. Now, some 
may think that we are not qualified. Yes, you might be right. Maybe we are not qualified. But by the Spirit of God, we are more than qualified. Because He is the one doing the teaching and the preaching. I mean, helping us to understand Him. No one can explain God expect, I mean, except God Himself. Only the Spirit of God can explain God to us. God is so deep and so, you know, as that man cannot fathom or understand him completely, but he reveals himself to us. He turn and show and show us this side today and then turn again the other side. And before we know it, we feel as if we really, really know everything about it. And no one can really know everything, but we can know enough to stay well, healthy, and live long on earth. Amen. I'm fulfilled in Jesus' name. When you know what you're supposed to know, you will be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So I said that we need to culture you and uh, that's what we've been trying to do. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. And I said that you are now a new creation in Christ. Creation in Christ. Now, in First Peter, remember First Peter, I believe two nine, it says, "But you are a uh, <laughs> you are <clears throat> you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, its own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of He who called you out of." Into is okay. Who once were not a people but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy? Hallelujah! Now you have done what? Obtained mercy. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord. Now we have obtained mercy. So this new life brings you to, you know, I use example of uh, being a royal, you know, a royal. So when you are a, a, a royalty, you know, you walk in a way. And that's where I'm going to start right now before we round it up. Hallelujah. Now you are being trained as a royal. You are being trained to walk a certain way, especially they want you to stand up straight. They don't want you to bow to anybody because you are just a royalty. Hallelujah. You are from the family of war, of royalty. So you walk about with straight shoulder and you look straight. You are not intimidated by no one because you know who you are. I am the prince. Hallelujah. The son of the king. I know who I am. So you know what? I'm not going to bow down to anyone. Everybody must do what? Respect me now. I'm not saying that you should be arrogant. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you know who you are. Who are you? You are a child of the living God. And not only that, you know that God lives inside of you. Whatever you do, People will say that, oh, he's supposed to be what? A child of God. So you see, so you be careful of what you do because of who you represent. You represent God. Now, we were having a discussion this morning. I'm not going into it, but what we were saying is that people might insult you, you may not mind. That who cares? It's my, you know, they can say whatever they like with their mouth and all that. Yeah, you might be right. But when you represent God, you don't allow people to insult God through what you do. I mean, we have simple example of uh, Prince Harry. You know, he just don't want to live his life. Come on, I don't want all this. But they say, no. 
You are not an ordinary person. You are not a commoner. You are special. So this is the way we want you to live. And finally, I believe, uh, 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 you know, I heard something about, they said to him that uh, if you don't comply, we will withdraw some privileges from you. And then he had to agree. And then he began to mend his way. So are we. We are now in a new kingdom. And we need to teach you how to walk in this kingdom. Hallelujah. There are strict rules when it comes to Christianity. Whether we like it or not, there are rules that we have to follow. I mean, like I said, we can't force you because God will not force you. So we can't as well. But we can advise you. We can admonish you. We can speak the word of God into your life. We can do that. Another thing we can do, we can refuse to recommend you for promotion. Even in the spirit. If God asks us for the account, because he asks us for your account, I don't know if you know that. If we are the pastors and you are members, you know, whatever you do, God will ask us. Don't think that we are going to. Don't think like God is going to punish us for your account. No, no. He asks us what we know or what we've done to prevent you from doing this and that and we have to give the account then you now look at it and then he's the judge if he thinks that you are fit for promotion then he promotes you if you think that you need to repeat a class you have to repeat the class but we have to give you the rules that is why there are things that we have to tell you to do and not to do hallelujah praise the lord they call they are called the do's and don'ts hallelujah if you go beyond this you're gonna have trouble if you stay within you will realize that you have everything at your disposal hallelujah now we set as well restriction to some things i said this as well Last week, there are restrictions. Now, let me just use a clubbing for an example. Just an example. It's not that I see anyone here going to club. You don't go club, do you? You don't do club. I know you don't. But if God should ask me to give account, what I will say is this. I'm not sure. I know you don't do club, but if you are doing clubbing behind me, then, you know, that's not my fault. It's not in my face. But in my face, my job is to rebuke you. It's to tell you, to educate you. That's my job. That's my assignment. Hallelujah. Why do we say that you shouldn't go to club? Or do clubbing? Why? Because when you go there, you can lose yourself and your dignity. If you go there, things can happen that you will not be able to handle. And then you will regret later. But not only you, you might have dragged down as well the name of the Lord. And people will begin to say things against your God, your Lord, your Savior. So because of that, we now advise you that this is no-go area for you as a child of God. And now you will say to me that, but I am free. We know that. You can actually go if you want to go. But if you want to enjoy things of the kingdom, have access to everything in the kingdom, then you have to abide by the do's and don'ts of the house. 
Not house here, but the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is what we call compulsory training. I say what? Compulsory training is not I volunteer. No. As a child of God, we have to teach you or train you how to pray. We have to. And if you don't like to pray, we have to kind of make you start to pray. Maybe you don't want to pray, hopefully, fine. But uh, when you are with us here, yeah, we want to see you praying. When we are praying, we don't expect you to open your eyes and begin to play with your phone. Hello? Now, again, we can't force you. That is the thing about church. We can't force anyone to do anything. You have the right to do whatever you want to do. But if you want to partake in the blessing of the kingdom, you have to put on the whole armor of God. We have to train you as a soldier. Like today, you have to still be in church even though you slept 6 a.m. Hello. It's just who you are. You're a soldier. After we close, you can go and sleep as much as you like. But now, Sunday, service, as a soldier, worker, you have to be here, standing firm, occupying your position. Amen. That is your position. You can't leave it vacant. Praise the Lord. Compulsory training. We have to train you to pray. We have to train you to read the word of God. Amen. You need to read the word of God. I don't know what you want to pray without the word of God. I don't know what is in your mind that you think you can pray without knowing the word of God. Because if you pray what is in your mind, I promise you that it's going to be out of the will of God. Because flesh will take over. Flesh, we want to tell you that this is what you need now. But if you have read the word of God, then you will now, you know, pray and say, Lord, inspire me. And the word you have read will now come to life in you. And then you begin to pray the mind of God. Hallelujah. So we need to train you to read the word of God. Now, Spiritual warfare is another thing that we have to train you on. You have to be able to rebuke Satan. It's not uh, uh, the enemy you should fear. Satan should not be one, you know, threatening you. You should be the one threatening him. Are you with me? You you should be able to stand to and say that. Well, I know what you are doing. But I know that you are not going to prevail. Why? Because I know that greater is in me than you. You have no power over me. You must be able to do what? Rebuke him. Not in fear, but in faith. Because you believe God. These signs. Come on now. These signs shall follow in my name. Now. Are we ready? How many of us want to cast out demons? Because we believe. I mean, hearing the name alone, many of us are shaking. When you hear Satan, then you are like, huh? When you hear God, you are like, oh God, yes, God. Lord, oh yes. Lord. Jesus, oh Jesus, yes. So, if I go now, Lord, Lord, if I say God, Lord, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Satan. We see one head, we go, eh? Then, demons. Demons. We, we hear demon and we are like, demon! Where? Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? They are everywhere. They enter everywhere. They, you know, it's not one of them. So a, a lot of them. Satan is the one that cannot go beyond the place. His God is 
is angels, you know, the calling angels that are going everywhere. But when we hear them, hey, if we are praying here now, and I was uh, at a meeting last night as well, you know, after the program, I went, I had to go to to Ashford quickly. And the minister of God was going on in the ministration and then she started praying for her people. And there was one screaming, you know, screaming with a very eyeball like, ah, wow! when I opened my eyes, all the people around that area, they have relocated. Because they thought that she's what? Possessed. So whatever coming out of her should not do. Could you marry me? What happened? What happened? What happened? They ran for their lives and they are like, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. That. Come on, you are a soldier. We need to do what? Train you to handle situation. You stand your guard and rebuke the name of Jesus. How? I mean, you are a soldier trained and you think that demon will now fly into your life. So if I do not need, he knows who you are. He will not even try to come near you at all. From afar, he can be throwing stone to you, you know, stone that. But to come into you, we get burnt, consumed straight away because you have been trained, fired up. So a new you is not a person who will be fearful. A soldier will stand the ground and ready to fight. Because, let me promise you, Satan will surely bring the fight up to you. He will bring the fight to you. But you should be able to be ready. To do what? To fight back. And you have all the ammunition. Ephesians 6, right? 10 to 12 and all that. He says, put on the whole armor. We need to train you to pray. To do warfare. Hallelujah. To stand in the gap. Not to be selfish. We need to train you not to be what? Selfish. We need to train you to be selfless. Hallelujah. That you, 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 even when it's not convenient, when it's not convenient, you place others' needs above yours. Hallelujah. You love people. You love God to the extent that, you know, even you know that. I mean, as humanly possible, I, I have done my best. I've, I've done what? My best. Praise the Lord. We have to train you to educate you to defend yourself. Self-defense. And I will tell you what it is. You need to have self defense training. And this is holiness and righteousness. That is the best defense that you can have as a child of God. When you choose to live in holiness and righteousness, you will discover that <laughs> nothing will be able to do or penetrate before the they enter, God already what? Reveal to you because of your holiness. Hallelujah. And don't tell me we cannot be holy. Don't tell me we can't be holy. Yes, we can be holy because it says be holy for I am holy. If it's not possible, he wouldn't be asking us. Hallelujah. People will say, you know, we are sinners. us. I beg to differ every time. I am not a sinner. I am a saint. Okay. I am a saint. I'm not a sinner. It doesn't mean that I don't sin, but I refuse to what? To become a sinner. So whenever I sin one way or the other, maybe, you know, somebody is used to, to trip me up, which, you know, happens uh, occasionally. You know, I have to quickly because the holy spirit in me will alert me that son you shouldn't have done 
that. And immediately, I should be able to say, Lord, I am what? Sorry. I repent. Instantly. Because if you are saying that I should wait until I speak to a prophet or a bishop to confess my sin, what happens in between the time I sin and the time I am queuing? I'm on the queue to confess sin. If Christ should come, what happened then? You can't hold this sin against me, Lord, because I'm on the queue. I would have done what? Confess. But because I'm on the queue, this cannot be held against me, right? But no. You confess immediately and the Bible says he is just. Faithful as well to do or to forgive your sins. And Romans 8 1 says, Then you have no condemnation because you are living in Christ. Praise the Lord. Privileges and benefits are also available to us in this kingdom, like favor, like grace. It's not for everybody. It's not to everyone. But for you, a child of the living God, come on now. You are favor for life. Okay? I hear him and there. I say you are favor for life. You are favor for life because you have been bought by the blood and now you have learned to live in the kingdom. You have changed your ways. If you don't change your ways... <laughs> The Bible says, can we say uh, 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 sin should continue and grace abound? Say no. If, if, if we are going to enjoy God's blessings, then we should refrain from our old ways. We stay away from our old ways. Okay, let's read quickly Ephesians 4 because I think we have not read any, uh, uh, although I've quoted a lot of scriptures, but we haven't read um, scripture. But now I want us to read yes Ephesians 4 again things that we have to do away with for us to be fully entitled to all that God has for us in the kingdom. Remember it says he has prepared some things for us. Things that have been what? Prepared for us. It's for us. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 4 verse 17. The Bible says, This I say to you, this I say therefore and sorry, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should know. You should no longer henceforth you should no longer walk which means this is the way you've been what? Walking. But now, henceforth, you should know as what? I'm trying to stay away from this, but I don't know if, I, if I'm able. But you, you know when you see your old friends? See how they can manipulate you? How they can influence you is the English? How they can influence you to do what they are doing. Do you know they can actually tease you to do it? Are you saying you don't do that anymore? Are you saying you don't drink? Are you saying, are you saying, I say, no. And I, oh, so somebody have brainwashed you. Now you have been brainwashed. And they say, no, 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 no. Before you know, they'll just, okay, you prove to us, prove to us, try this. And before you know, you are speaking another language. It says, you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. In the what? Futility of their minds. Any other English there? Or the what? Vanity of their hearts. Which means things that are not worthy of anything. Worthless things. What? I cannot add value to your life. They think about it and they walk with it 
And you are now being asked, not forced, not to walk like they walk. It says in 18, having their understanding darkened. They can't see. They can't reason it out. And you remember the meaning of sound mind is what? Do you remember? Sound mind means what? Ability to do what? To reason, to think for for your own self. That is the meaning of sound mind. So, when you stand before God on the day of judgment, you can't say it's my friend. You can't say it's my mother. You can't say it's my father. You can't say it's my uncle. You are going to say, this is what I did by myself. Ability to reason and understand for your own self. So when we are going to blame somebody, it's not going to be anyone else but but as a new man, we are asking you to walk away from this. Being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their hearts. So do you know that the heart has got eyes? Your heart has got eyes. <laughs> Your hearts can be blind. The blindness of their heart. Now, it's not that what they're supposed to say is not there. Are you with me? What they're supposed to say is there, but they are not seeing it because their heart is blind. And what can cause one's eyes to be blind? The exposure to the word of God. When you have no interest in the word of God. When you have no interest in the things of God. And what happened? Your mind is dull. Alienated means that they are no more in that kingdom. They are now outside the kingdom. Hallelujah. If somebody can read for me the next verse, even if you don't have microphone, verse 19. Go on. Uh, oh, being past feeling. Huh. As what? Giving themselves over to. What's the meaning? What's the meaning? Another English. I want another English there. Sorry? Sensuality. Sensuality. So it's not only being naked, but when you begin to like uh, sell yourself. I, I know we discussed this that uh, why do we dress the way we dress? And we say that to attract. Remember? Who are you attracting? If you are if you are attracting God fearing people, you will dress in a certain way. And if you want to attract, you know, especially if you like clubbing and you want husband from the club, you know, that you can't dress like a church boy or church, or church girl. If you, you know, you can't. There is a way that you have to dress to attract them or else they won't want to come. They won't come near you. So, it depends on who you are attracting. Go on, ma. Having given themselves over, over to lewdness, to so walk all on cleanness with greediness. With greediness. But, but, but you have not so learned Christ. Uh -huh. If indeed you have heard him uh -huh. and have been taught by him, uh -huh. as the truth is in Jesus, uh -huh. that you put off Concerning your former conduct, hmm. the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and, and, be, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And be do what? Renewed in the spirit of your mind. Uh -huh. And that you put on the new man. You put on the new man. Which was created according to God. Uh -huh. 
in true righteousness and holiness remember in true righteousness and holiness if you are going to enjoy anything from this new kingdom the new you need to start to live a life of holiness not someone trying to monitor you or follow you around to to see that you are doing everything right but you know for yourself that now i am a holy nation a royal priesthood a chosen generation a special people you know who you are and then you start to live just like that now many people many of your old friends may not agree with you some may have to walk away from you and some you have to walk away from oh you don't understand that you do some would no longer want to work with you because you now became an embarrassment to them. They see you and they feel embarrassed. They're like, oh, I don't want, I don't want them to see us together. But some, they still want to come around you. Even they know that you have changed your ways, but they refuse to change their ways. And you are still young in faith. You will need to do what? walk away okay i know you don't agree but it's all right you agree some you just have to walk away because they are not adding to you in any way they are doing what pulling you back you said i'm not smoking anymore and every time you go to their house or they come to your house you are like already smoked and drank some you just have to walk away from walk away from because they are not hiding to your faith hallelujah they are not allowing you to enjoy the kingdom hallelujah so there are privileges that you are entitled to in the new kingdom as a new you you have full access to it like the name of jesus like the name of jesus you can use the name of jesus because you are actually redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary. Hallelujah. Now you have full access to use the name. Something that you can use a name anyhow or anyone can. Not anyone. Not anyone. A born again Christian use the name of Jesus. If you are not born again, if you use it, you will not have the same effect. You will not experience the same effect. But a born again Christian... When you say in Jesus' name, you believe it and you know it's already in action. It says whatever you ask God in my name, He will do to you. Say up to now you have not asked. Ask anything in my name, and it shall be done to you. Hallelujah! That is one of the privilege that you have as a child of God, a born again Christian. The name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, blood of Jesus. You can use it, you can use it, but don't use it in vain. You don't understand that? If you are not uh, uh, living in fear, then you will not use the name of Jesus to kill a fly in your kitchen. Hello? Now, my son called me today because he saw uh, a bird. He said, I'm not sure if he's still alive or he's dead. So, you know, so I do understand that. So, I came to see the thing. The way the thing turned his head, I know he's dead. And so, all I need to do is to do what? Get rid of it. I shouldn't be, you know, approaching and saying, in Jesus' name. In Jesus. In Jesus. Blood of God. Blood. No. Just take the thing, put it in the bin. If there is fly in your room, then get a net to stop them from coming or use the spray to kill. You don't need Jesus' name to kill fly. Um, you don't need it. Hallelujah. Rats, I understand. You can use your power, not Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Snake, now I understand. Snake, you can say, hey, Jesus' name, snake, fry. He will raise his head, he will be like this, hello, are you saying what? If he's sent to you 
by the evil word, the name of Jesus. What if he's just passing by? If he entered through there, open the other door for you to do what? To go out. Waiting. Hallelujah. I'm not afraid of snake. Just don't bring one near me. Hallelujah. You are a child of the living God. Allow yourself to be trained. Like I said, we can't force these things. But you can submit yourself. You can allow God to assist you. Hallelujah. Holiness is one of the things that you need. Righteousness follows. Hallelujah. I want us to round up now. Jesus knows that we can't achieve any of this thing by our own self. And that is the standard. That is the truth. Though you want to do it, you want to be holy, you want to, you, you want to be righteous, without the help of the Holy Spirit, you might struggle. And this is where what I said last week, that the process of being transformed is where many of us are stuck in. We are stuck. Yes, we give our life to Christ, but to go beyond that, we struggle. In the book of Zechariah 4 6, the Bible says, I will be 4 6, it says, um, Not by mind, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You can't do it by yourself. So I, you know, I want to employ us. I want to, to, you know, yes, you have given your life to Christ. We know that. We understand that. But that is not the end of Christian's journey. Amen. It's just the beginning. There are things to know, things to learn, and then you will proceed. Then you will move up and do what? Bring down great mountains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In John, in John 14, 15. In John chapter 14, verse 15. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And he now says, listen, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. That he may abide with you forever. Who is this helper? The spirit of truth. You see, that's what I meant earlier, that you don't need anyone to chase you about to do the right thing. You have the Holy Spirit to do that for you. Hallelujah. Once you put your faith in a, you know, a wrong thing or you, or you, you step into where you shouldn't. The Holy Spirit will say, There, son, that's not the right way to do things. Don't do it. And all we have to do is to surrender to his leading. And he will help us in the name of Jesus. He says, The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. You see, it's, the, it's only for who? Those that are in the kingdom. In the kingdom, in the kingdom, the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you, your new you, knows him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. Praise the Lord. Verse 26 of the same chapter 14 of John it says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will what? Teach you. Are you there? 
we teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Now, this is the only way we can survive in this new kingdom. As a born again Christian, without the help of the Holy Spirit, we will fail. I'm not saying we might fail. I'm promising you that you will fail without the help of the Holy Spirit. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, you can't fail. You cannot fail. Ephesians 4.20 Okay, I think we read that earlier, but you see, Satan is not going to fold his hands. Come on now. Let me just say that. As I close this, amen. Satan, knowing your agenda, knowing that you want to now live in a new kingdom, knowing that now you realize who you are in Christ, will not go away. Maybe for a while. It will surely do what? Return. Hallelujah. It will return. So that is why you have to be trained and ready because Ephesians says that put on the whole hammer of God so that you may be able to stand when the day of evil Satan will come and try you he will come and try you so he's going to fight you through your flesh amen You, I, I know you've heard the flesh is weak right spirit willing but flesh is weak to those who do not what have spirits leading them if the spirit of god is leading you the flesh is strong okay i know you don't believe me i know i mean if i have said no to this kind of things you know, it's easy for me to use smoking and drinking. So, if I'm actually stepping on your toes, please allow me. Because I wanted to say, take your feet away. But no, allow me to step on it. I'm talking about myself now. I've said no to drinking. I used to drink uh, 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 um, sweet wine. I'm, uh, um, I, I was what they used to say, occasional uh, occasion. I, I use, when there is occasion we occasion it hallelujah and then we regret it after but you know the day I said no to it and I prayed and since then whenever alcohol enter my mouth what happens is I begin to have headache immediately even if it's in the cake and you didn't know you know what those uh, fruit cake that uh, comes with rum and uh, you didn't know and then you eat cake and you're like mm, this cake is sweet oh and the minute after your head is doing bang i mean me because you it might be at that time you begin to see vision it's okay but i'm i'm your say me my head will just do bang and ah, something was in that cake now alcohol is kind of like uh, uh you know uh, 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 um, it repels against against my nature now. Used to, but no more. If God can do it for me, and why? Because I determined and said to myself that I want to live an only life, a righteous life. It wasn't forced on me. Nobody forced me to. So I, the same thing I'm saying to you. I'm not trying to force anybody to do anything. But to enjoy the kingdom, there are some things you just have to let go so that the power of God can be manifested in you. Praise the Lord. Satan will come to fight in the area of flesh. Let me read Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1 19. It says, Jer sorry, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 19. The Bible says, they will fight against you. Satan will fight against you. 
but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. Let's stand. Yeah. Hallelujah. Flesh will come in many ways to trip you. His job is to make sure that you fall back to your old ways. Satan will want to draw you back to your old life. Because where you are now, you are not bringing him any gain. He has no profit in your new lifestyle. You know, if you stay with the old one, I think you will be very happy. Actually, it doesn't trouble you much because he knows that you are already captured. So it doesn't really trouble you. But once you give your life to Christ and then you want to walk according to, to, to his ways, Satan is not happy. He wants to fight you. He wants to make sure that he, he brings you back to where you used to be. But we will not allow him, are we? No, we are not going to allow him. So I want you to pray. I told the Lord, the Lord, keep me strong. As a new me, Father Lord, in you, keep me strong. Endow me with the grace, the power to stand firm whenever Satan try. Father, give me the grace and the power, the ability to resist him. Are you praying in the house? Give me the grace and the ability to resist it. I know it will surely flee from me. 